Welcome to our homestead and welcome to our solar room. I've got something really important to show you today and that's this new EG4 charge verter. This is really important if you have an off-grid system with an all-in-one inverter like we do, like with these EG4 6500s. And if you go for a long period of time with no sun, like we do here in East Texas during the rainy season in the spring, then you need a way to charge your batteries. And the best way to do that is with a generator, but a lot of people don't have the right size generator to charge through the inverters. So the new charge verter gives us the opportunity to charge our batteries directly from this generator. Let's go in and talk about why that's really important. So I know what you're thinking. Why don't I just charge the batteries from the AC in from the grid and run it through the inverters? That's fine, but I do not have AC in. These are technically off grid. Now your second question might be, why don't I connect the generator directly into these and charge the batteries through these inverters from the generator? That's not a good idea. And it's because almost all gasoline or propane generators have what's called dirty power. And that dirty power occurs at certain ranges on the loads that are being put on the generator. So above 60%, and below 50%. There's a sweet spot right in the middle, some say to from 50 to 70%, but there's that sweet spot right in the middle where you get a pure sine wave. But here's an issue. If you're powering your home with these and you're running a lot of your loads at the same time, you could be pushing up to 12 kilowatts through these at once. Your batteries are going to need about another five kilowatts to charge. So to keep your generator running with that pure sine wave and optimally for that generator, you're going to need to run in that 60% range. So for us, that's a 10, or a 10 kW generator out there. That's 6,000 watts. So if I'm charging the batteries at 5,000, I can only pull 1,000 through the house. I'd have to shut these off because if something kicks on, say it's the water heater or another compressor in another uh, refrigerator, whatever it is, it's gonna to draw too much power and I'm gonna get that voltage collapse and it's gonna damage these. So if you are gonna run a generator through your inverters, you need a huge generator, probably 22 to 23 kilowatt generator. Those are about six grand installed, maybe a little bit more. Most of us can't go throw around six grand for a generator. The one out there was 1100 bucks. So how do we use the generators that we have to charge our batteries? That's where the charge verter comes in. So I have heard that one of the biggest issues these are returned is because of improper generator sizing and trying to charge it through the charger in the inverter itself via a generator that's just too small. And it's going to be the same for the GrowWatts and the MPP 6548s. So this thing is amazing for how much it costs. It's a 5,000 watt, 48 volt charger. And you can charge at 100 amps. That means that I can charge one of my batteries in one hour from zero to 100%. And we're gonna run an experiment at the end of the video. I've run my batteries down until the inverters have cut off. I cut them off at 15%. Some of them actually dropped to 13. So there's a little discrepancy there, but we're gonna see how long it takes to charge my entire battery bank. Now the charge verter comes with a 240 volt, four prong NEMA L 1430 plug. And that'll work perfectly with my generator. However, this can also charge at 120 volt, but you will need an adapter and you'll have to follow the pinout instructions to be able to switch that over. So I recommend that if you're getting one of these and you have a solar system, that you just get a generator that has the 240 plug on it. And for us, we will be able to run this at full power because our generator is a 10 kW generator, we will get that 5,000 watts in that sweet spot for the efficiency on the generator as well. It's awesome. So what I love about this is it's not going to harm any of your equipment, especially not the inverters because it's not connected to them. It's directly connected to, the, to your batteries. But you can also optimize the current to work perfectly with your generator. So on the side of the charge verter, we've got our DC positive and negative, and I have those wired to the bus bars because I have two battery banks and they're split off the bus bars. We're gonna see when I charge them if that works really well, or if I should reconnect those to the bus bars on the main bank and then redo it on the smaller battery bank. Now you can run this straight out of the box on your generator and just plug it in and go. But your generator is gonna to have to be physically very close to your system. So you're going to need the proper extension cord. I found this one on Amazon, it's from RV Guard, and it's got a couple of extra adapters in the box and some goodies, which is nice, it's a really nice cable. 
And for right now, Signature Swaller doesn't have any of these. I talked to them the other day and I told them to put something like this on their website as well to sell along with this because most people are going to need a longer cord on these. And of course, I'll have all of these linked in the description below the video. So these charge verters will get hot. So you want to mount it on some concrete board or in a place where it is safe to mount it at. You can mount it on the side of your battery rack as well since it's steel. But for our initial testing, we're just gonna set it here on the top where it's safe, run our cord outside to the generator and get charging. I love the controllability of these Just Right cans. I have a bunch of them, they're awesome. Let's turn this thing on. Okay, you'll have to bear with me with the noise of that generator outside. We've got power to our charge verter, charging at zero amps, obviously. We need to adjust this, but we need to adjust it with the breaker off. We're gonna enter in, it's set to charge at currently at 100 amps at 48 volts. So we are gonna go with the setting. I can bump this up to 51.7. So when you're at this screen, you just go down to your amperage, enter into it, and then you can select your amperage that you want. And now we can switch back on our breaker. And I don't know if you can hear that, but the fan has kicked on on the charge burner. It's under load, charging at 50 amps. Let's check our batteries. See my state of charge is zero on this battery. I'm not sure why, but it is charging. Currently charging at 9.2 amps on this battery. So we are charging through our bus bars and these three batteries are currently charging. 12 amps, 11 amps, 12 amps for those. And we are at 10 amps. All of these are currently charging it at anywhere from between 9 amps to 12 amps. They're all being charged through those two bus bars right there. Now that I know everything's working well, I've cranked this up to 56 volts at 100 amps. And it is certainly getting quite hot. It's about 113 and a half degrees here on the front, 115. And on the side in the internal is at about 130. All right, let's let them charge. We will be back later. Okay, I found a sweet spot for the charge burner and it's set at 55 volts at 95 amps. It's currently 4.10 p.m. We started this at 12.45. However, I do have to mention that I did run out of gas one time. I didn't fill the tank up on the generator all the way. And additionally, I also had to turn off the charge verter and turn it back on because it slowed down at one point. I reset what the uh, charging amps were at and the voltage, and now it's running perfectly. The setting I had it at before was 51.2 volts and 100 amps. Now it's at 55 and 95. Okay, we're looking at 26%, 25%, 26, 25, 25, 25, and 28. And then over on the other battery bank, we've got 28, 28, and 28. So I do want to say the charge verter puts out a lot of heat, so make sure you're in a space that's well cooled. Currently we're at 137 degrees, but that fan is blowing out all that heat. So it's pushing that really hot air into this space. So our total test time right now is three hours and 15 minutes to get to 26%. But we need to subtract about 20 minutes out of that for me to go get gas and fuel up the generator again. And then another 10 minutes, give or take, to readjust the charge verter itself. So let's call it two hours and 45 minutes for 26%, give or take. So the charge verter can charge one of these 48 volt server rack batteries in one hour. So our test so far for our nine batteries is perfectly in line with that. So the reason my batteries are at a zero state of charge is because I connected this a few days ago and waited until today to do the test, but I didn't turn off the breaker. So make sure after you're done using your charge verter, you turn off the breaker every single time. I should have thought of that when I was doing it and just didn't notice it. So I have to mention, if you buy two of these EG4 6500EXs or two of the 6000s, Signature Solar is giving you one of these for free. That's a $400 value. That's pretty crazy. Also, if you buy one of the EG4 8000s, you get one of these for free. And for them to offer something like this for only $400, that's an insane value. If you look at some of the Ames chargers out there, they are three to four times as much as this. And again, I'll leave a link to this in the description below the video. And down there, additionally, are links to 
absolutely every piece of solar equipment we use for our homestead, including the tools that we use. And I want to mention too that the Chargeverter has a three-year warranty. Again, I'm super excited to have something like this, especially being off-grid, because it's going to protect my equipment. So I'm stopping the test right here because I think we got a good picture of how this operates and the time it's going to take to charge the batteries to 100%. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know what they are in the comments section below. Now go click on this video right here, which shows you how we install these EG4 inverters from start to finish. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.